Hey everyone, I'm meteorologist Stephen Abshire, and the term El Nino might sound confusing because it doesn't sound like much of a weather term at all, but it is, and it can actually have big impacts on the United States and across the world. El Nino Southern Oscillation has to do with ocean temperatures in the Pacific, and that's very far away, so how can that actually impact us here at home? Well, you might be surprised that the impacts could be pretty widespread, and I think we're going to see some of those impacts as we get into the summer months because an El Nino is on the way. So what is an El Nino? Well, it's when you see warmer ocean temperatures along the equator in the eastern Pacific. And again, that's very far away, but it can have impacts across the globe because the ocean and the atmosphere are well connected. And this conveyor belt of warm air that normally rides along the equator can shift. And when it shifts, it can have impacts from the Atlantic to the Indian Ocean, causing less or more hurricanes in the Atlantic and ultimately more moisture into the United States. But recently, we haven't really been seeing that. We've been under a La Nina for the past two and a half years. Just recently, we've gone into the neutral state and now ocean temperatures are starting to warm up. And we've actually entered into an El Nino watch, which in the next upcoming months or so, we could see that become an El Nino as we head into the summer months. So taking a look at the Pacific Ocean, where are we actually seeing this warm water? Well, right along the equator now, we're seeing that warmer water. That yellow means it's an anomaly for warmer temperatures. That blue means it's below average for this uh, time of the year. But you can see warmer water, especially as you get towards the coast near South America. And that's an indicator that maybe warmer water will be going all the way along the Eastern Pacific. But what is the forecast showing as we move into the summer months? Well, recently we've been in that neutral state, like I mentioned. But to get into an El Nino, you need three months of being above 0.8 degrees Celsius above average. And it looks like we're very close to that. As we get into May, we could very much be into that El Nino range. And by June and July, by the summer months, we could even be seeing a strong El Nino. And the forecasts are hinting that by the end of the year, this El Nino could be sticking around because in general, El Ninos and La Ninas last at least one year in terms of that cycle. So over the past few years, we've gone from being strongly in a La Nina to recently being in neutral state and now and El Nino could be just around the corner for the summer months. But what kind of impacts can we expect for this summer? Now, a lot of the impacts you see with El Nino and La Nina aren't noticed on a day-to-day -day basis. They're more climate-related, so over a season or over a year, you might notice, hey, we did not see as much rainfall, or maybe we saw some more storms or less hurricanes. During the summer months, not quite as noticeable as what you see during the winter, but we will see some impacts as we get going into the summer. What we could expect, well, mainly going to see across the area temperature-wise, generally cooler across the south, central, and eastern United States, and it's drier in the Pacific Northwest. Rainfall-wise, you're going to see slightly wetter conditions in the Rockies, Ozarks, and East Coast, and drier along the Gulf Coast and upper Great Plains. Well, that's just during the summer month, but what else can you expect? Typically, during an El Nino in the Atlantic Ocean, we have a less active hurricane season. We have more wind shear and uh, more stability, which limits the uh, ability for hurricanes to form and eventually make landfall. But the opposite is true in the Pacific, where you're seeing all that warm water, you actually have less wind shear, and that warm water will be able to cause stronger hurricanes and a more active season is projected. Well, what can we expect if this El Nino lasts not only through the summer into the fall, but also for the winter? Well, the winter is actually when you see these effects most notably. You have the higher variation in weather across the United States, and the El Nino has a bigger impact on that. You actually see warmer conditions when you're up in parts of the upper Great Plains into the Rockies into parts of Canada. That jet stream is much lower than what it normally is. It normally takes a big dive over Pacific Northwest, but during an El Nino, it normally cuts through California and then to the south. So you see wetter conditions for parts of the southwest and generally cooler conditions for the south, drier for much of the eastern coast. So we'll continue to monitor the El Nino and in general the Pacific Ocean temperatures as we move into the upcoming months because the strong El Nino could be on the way. For 5 News, I'm meteorologist Stephen Abshire.